Hey guys, it's Damien. And I'm Kennedy. And thank you so much for joining us today. Now, today we're going to be talking about leading as a husband in marriage. And if you haven't gotten the book, hashtag completely married, in my chapter, I talk about leadership from a different perspective. It's going to be in the description below. So please get the book. And ladies, don't click off. This message is for you too. It's important to know what to look for in a man that you um, will be submitting to in marriage. And so we want to learn these leadership qualities for ourselves as well. And next week, we're going to be doing a video on submission and the role of a wife in marriage. So make sure men too don't miss that video next week. So we did a acronym for LEAD and we're going to give you the four key components on how to lead as a husband in marriage. So the first one is L and L stands for love. Ah. <laughs> Ephesians 5.25 says, husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church. Now that word love in the Greek is agapio, which means to take care of somebody's well-being or welfare. As a husband, I have to understand the responsibility that God has given given me to take care of my wife or my future kids. Now, I'm not here to please my wife. I'm not here to please my kids. I'm not even here to please myself. I'm here to please the Lord. And I look to the Lord for an example. You see the Lord, Jesus Christ came down from heaven and came to a lowly place. So love leads low. That's good. Love leads low. So as a husband, I have to lead low. I see my wife as a pride possession, right? And I take care of her well-being. What does that look like? That means I'm getting up early in the morning and I'm praying for direction from God. God, which way should we go? What should we do? How should we build your kingdom here on earth? That's so good. The second one is E, which is evidence. Your wife should see evidence that you are submitted to God. Yes. You see, we're supposed to be submitted to God. The order is Christ as the head, then the husband, then the wife. And so we're leading from a place of submission yeah. under God. There should be evidence that you're communing with God. There's evidence that you're abiding with God. And this will give your wife peace in your leadership. Galatians 5, through 23 says, But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. So your fruit helps your wife give her peace and trust that you are worthy and capable of leading her. So your wife should see you communing with God. That means praying, reading the word. So it helps her give that peace, give that trust, to follow you as the leader. That's so good. So the third component in leading as a husband in marriage is the A in lead, which is ask. Your wife is your help me. Ask for input. Yeah. Ask what, what has the Lord put on your heart? What do you think about this situation? See, there she's here to help you, help you make those good decisions. And so lean into that, that advice. She represents like the Holy Spirit in the relationship. She's not the Holy Spirit, but she's a, a type and shadow of of the Holy Spirit and so we want to lean into that advice you don't have to make decisions by yourself it's important to to get her advice get her opinions in the situation as you're finding the right direction for your family Proverbs 12 15 says the way of fool seems right to them but the wise listen to advice so it's a wise thing to tap into your help me you are a team it's not a competition but a partnership lean into that advice the wisdom that God has given her as well to help make those um, good decisions for your family. So the second ask is to ask for forgiveness. First, we need to ask for forgiveness to our Father in Heaven. Then we need to ask for forgiveness to our wives. Men, we do not get it right all the time. I do not get it right all the time. So I must humble myself, come to my wife, come to God <laughs> and say, I'm sorry, I apologize. And I want to get right. I want to reconcile that relationship with my wife. Mm -hmm. James 5 16 says therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective so we're more powerful when we're honest and in unity so the last one is the D and it stands for discipline as a husband I have to lead in discipline that means I have to take this role and position very seriously I have to seek purpose over pleasure that means putting pleasure to the side that's video games that's sports that's even sometimes going out so I can lead my wife or lead my 
children. You see, there's too much stuff at stake. I have to guard my eyes, my ear gates, my mind, my heart, and even my mouth. I should not be spewing bad things to tear my wife down. I have to pray to God and say, God, I surrender my flesh and I surrender it to you. And this doesn't mean you're never having fun or pleasure, but we're yeah. taking that position seriously because the enemy wants to take the head out. When they can chop off the head, you've conquered the entire family. And so it's important to be sober minded, not being distracted of things of this world and not being in the proper place in your home as the husband leading your family in the fear of the Lord. So we hope this message was a blessing to you um, and to those who've been watching. Make sure to check us next week when we're we'll talking about submission and the role of a wife. And be sure to get our book, Hashtag Completely Married, where we have chapters of leading and submission in the book as well. So if you want to continue to learn more on this topic, check out our next video, How to Spot a High Value Man. Again, my name is Damian Nash. And I'm Kennedy Nash. And we will talk to you next time. Bye. Bye.